Hey, it's me, I'm Jenny Lee, and I'm here with the third installment of the book discussion of The Raw Contact, Volume 1. Um, you might notice that I'm wearing the same shirt as yesterday. This is because this is my sleeping shirt for right now. <laughs> In other words, I'm wearing my pajamas. Maybe I have a problem with that. That's your problem, not mine. Um, <laughs> So I read through the first session. So they break the book up into all the sessions, uh, which they do like one session at a time. And I think it was uh, roughly around an hour for each session that they did um, with Carla channeling raw. So the first session was really just establishing contact with the entity, getting to know what it was sorry my computer's yelling at me um getting to know what it is and then they asked they were able to ask some questions so let's take a look at what uh we learned today first of all keisha asked is that an agra on the desk hell yeah it's an agra there she is in all her glory um i also have another one up here there she is isn't she the best? That's who, that's who I, that's who I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> I'm already on my way there. I think I have the body type down and uh, I'm sure my hair will turn white. One of my eyes is already um, going blind and, uh, you know, I don't think I can grow the horns or anything. <laughs> but the rest of it, I'm on it, guys, I'm on it. All right, so in session one, we learn that raw communicates through a narrow band vibration. I don't really understand what that means. Uh, I just thought that it was important to underline it. <laughs> um, okay, so here's something that I thought was interesting. So the Confederation of Planets and the service of the infinite creator has only one important statement. The statement, my friends, as you know, is all things, all life, all of the creation is part of one original thought. One original thought. Not an original energy, not an original creator, not an original source of energy, <laughs> whatever. An original thought. I don't think that we can understand that yet. <laughs> um, I think that we can imagine it. I think that if you have a good imagination, you can imagine what that might mean. But I don't think that we can understand that yet. And, you know, like I've already said, I don't know how I feel about the densities and the levels and the frequencies and all that stuff. You know, like I kind of, I kind of feel it and I kind of understand it. But, you know, according to this entity, if we're still in this third density, we wouldn't understand that yet. If we're moving up to the next one, then um, maybe we'll get there. But I thought, okay, I thought, I've been thinking this. If it has to do with thoughts, there is something in my childhood that already led me to this. You might have seen what I've written on the, the corner of the page here. <laughs> you are not part of a material universe. You are part of a thought. You are dancing in a ballroom in which there is no material. You are dancing thoughts. You move your body, your mind, and your spirit in somewhat eccentric patterns, for you have not completely grasped the concept that you are part of the original thought. If you have ever seen the movie, The Never Ending Story, you have seen this happen because the land and the stuff starts getting eaten away by the nothing, right? And everything disappears. But all it takes is for Bastion 
to imagine the stuff existing and it comes back to life it comes back into existence because the land of in the never-ending story which for some reason I'm drawing a blank of what it's called <laughs> um, is created by thought it's created by the imagination of children in the movie anyway I've read the book the book's a little bit different um, but in the movie the never-ending story all of that is created by thought and imagination so if you're having a hard time understanding what that meant and you've seen the never-ending story then you now know and can imagine what that means because that's what Bastion does he brings everything back in the land of Fantasia Ooh, I remembered it um, by thought he thinks it into being which I think says so much about going into what the law of attraction talks about which is how much our thoughts how much more important our thoughts are than we realize because if our thoughts are what is creating our existence and our universe and our individual um, realities then you got to be real careful about what your thoughts are and not focus on negative positive horrible awful things you got to focus on positive wonderful happy things that you want to experience that you want to do that you want to you know whatever it all comes together you know the law of one is what Ra is talking about and the law of attraction is what Abraham is talking about clearly they're clearly they're two different entities that probably are on the same level or density or whatever you want to call it. And they're both trying to teach us, us third level density humans something important, um, but different things. But it's all connected, it's all the same, but it's just, you know, I don't know. So, so much, so much. Okay, so the next thing. Um, I thought this was interesting too. Okay, hold on. There's two things that I marked here. Okay, so this is Ra explains how it tries to communicate with the channeler. So it says the instrument will find us entering the energy field at a slight angle towards the back of the top of the head in a narrow but strong area of intensity. We are not able to offer any conditioning due to our own transmitting limitations. Therefore, if the instrument, <clears throat> the person doing the channeling, the medium, can feel this particular effect, he may then speak our thoughts as they come to him. <clears throat> so, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I've been trying to think back, um, on what I felt the time the two times and I remember very specifically the first time because it was so different and I remember saying that I felt like I had to go much higher up out of myself to pull this entity in and it was a very frantic kind of energy that was like a higher vibration and it was very strong so I don't remember it feeling like it was coming in the back of my head um, I'm, it might have been uh, I don't know but it's that's also weird because <clears throat> my major physical sign of when I feel spirit is my forehead and the front of my head tingling like I know, even if I'm just like driving somewhere, <laughs> that when the front part of my head starts tingling and feeling weird, that spirit is really close to me, physically really close to me. So that's different that the raw entity is saying that it enters at the back of the head. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> All right, so this was also weird. So Ra already was talking through Carla. That's how they're talking, right? 
then Ra tries to talk through Don and some person named Leonard. I don't know who that is. I don't know if that's Jim's real name or what, or if there's another person in there with him. But Ra spends like a whole bunch of minutes trying to connect with somebody else in the room. But he's already, but it was already talking through Carla. So what was the point of that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Next. We are those who are the law of one. In our vibration, uh, the polarities are harmonized. The complexities are simplified and the paradoxes have their solution. We are one. This is our nature and purpose. So remember in the, I went the wrong way that time. That made me feel dizzy. <laughs> So remember in the density definition section of the introduction, it said that the fourth density is where the polarities separate into their own existences. So what, what I understood that is, uh, what I understood that as is that the things that we consider good and the things that we consider bad or the things that we consider positive and the things that we consider negative, like literally separate out into their own realms. But Ra is saying in the sixth density that it's all harmonized, that it's all one, that it's all, there's no paradoxes, there's no polarities. It's all, it's all one, which later on in the session section, it talks about um, there is no right and wrong, which in our human existence is really hard to grasp, especially for people who have experienced really awful things, because you cannot think about the awful thing that you experienced without thinking in it, thinking of it as something negative. Even if something positive came from it, you just can't. <laughs> you just can't. And at some point, you can. At some point, you can. And some people are way more forgiving than others. And some people can move on from things quicker than others. But the majority of people that experience something awful have a really hard time not thinking of it as something negative you know what i'm saying so maybe that's just part of our third level density or whatever i don't know um you may have noticed that my screen back there is flashing every once in a while <laughs> i think my computer is having some issues and uh, it's been doing it for a while but then it, eventually it'll like it'll stop doing the flashy thing and it'll be normal. But um, for now, we're just dealing with it. It'll probably be a huge issue at some point and I'll have to get something replaced, but not today. Okay, so here's another interesting part. We are old upon your planet and have served with varying degrees of success in transmitting the law of one. We have walked your earth and we have seen the faces of your peoples. Very interesting. So, I wonder what that means because they don't really go into any more detail about it. So did they come down to our earth at some point and their, and what would be their physical body? Like the physical body that they would have had at one point or did they come down into a human body? I don't know. And then this, this is another thing that is really hard for us to wrap to grasp and wrap our minds around. Uh, we are not part of time and thus are able to be with you in any of your times. <laughs> there is no thing, no such thing as time. Time doesn't exist. All times are happening at the same time. All that stuff is like super hard to uncomprehend. Uh, here's some more interesting things. So this is about when they came to the Egyptians. Uh, they made contact with the Egyptians and um, 
by uh, through one particular person who understood them and was in a position to decree the law of one. But, of course, humans had to screw it up. They distorted their message, robbing it of compassion and um, and and didn't use it as raw saw fit, so they left. They're also saying that another density or social memory complex made contact at the same time in South America and the so-called lost cities were their attempts to contribute to the law of one. So there's all these different there's all these different theories and ideas about how and why the Egyptians and South American um, peoples have the same stuff. <laughs> and I've heard lots of theories and I have my own theories. Um, if you've never heard of or read any Graham Hancock, he has a really interesting book. What is it called though? No, I'm not going to be remember. No, I'm not going to remember. But uh, he has a really interesting book about a lost civilization that he backs up with historical documentation. And you know, in in the woo woo world, <laughs> we already have these concepts of Atlantis and Lumeria or Mu, Mu. Um, that there's these continents that existed in both of the major oceans that had advanced civilizations that disappeared. But he thinks through his documentation that that might have actually been on the continent of Antarctica when Antarctica was habitable and that a huge climate change happened where the poles shifted and everything changed drastically, which there's a lot of also scientific data that, that proves that. And um, the people that lived there had to escape and that they went some of them went to Egypt and some of them went to South America and that's why there's this there's this parallel of uh, information and similarities between the two places which I, I feel there's a lot of truth in that um, but Ra is saying that they contacted the Egyptians and somebody else contacted the South Americans, which could also be true. Maybe they both happened. Who knows? Nobody knows. Okay. Moving onward, moving forward. Unity. So I thought this was a great example of what unity really means. And going back to that painting that we made the um, in the spirit art session. So, in an infinite creator, there's only unity. You have seen examples of unity. You have seen the prism, which shows all colors stemming from the sunlight. This is a simplistic example of unity. So, you know, that's how a rainbow is made, right? Right, guys? Right? Everybody knows that um, when sunlight, sunlight, light isn't just white. <clears throat> that it's made up of all the colors and when it's shown through a prism or droplets of water it breaks down and separates all the colors into their own space all the waves of light so I thought that was a great example really it's all one thing but it's also made up of these individual things and then, yeah, here's the part where he talks about there's no right or wrong. And, he, and then this part was really difficult for me to understand about distortions. Um, we're distorting ourselves by thinking that we live in this material, this materialistic world, I think. Uh, but that one, the distortions were a little bit confusing. All right. 
We are not speaking of similar <clears throat> or somewhat like entities or things. You are everything, every being, every emotion, every event, every situation. You are unity. You are infinity. Infinity. You are love, light, light, love. You are. This is the law of one. So, okay. There was a TV show on not too long ago during COVID times, I believe, <clears throat> that was trying to show that and talk about that by telling a story. <clears throat> it was the Tales from, oh God, why can I never remember any? <laughs> I can never remember anything. I couldn't remember the Graham Hancock <laughs> book and now I can't remember this. Okay, so I had to look up the names of the stuff that I couldn't remember because I felt like it was important. So Graham Hancock's book is called Fingerprints of the Gods, which <coughs> I had forgot that's what it was called. And I think that's uh, extraordinarily appropriate considering that's what we're talking about, that Ra was considered to be an Egyptian god. And I'm sure that the entity that contacted the South Americans ended up being one of their gods. And, um, yeah, so Graham Hancock, Fingerprints of the Gods, it's a huge book, but it has a ton of excellent, wonderful, amazing information in it. And the show that I was trying to remember was from Jason Siegel, and it's Dispatches from Elsewhere. Dispatches from Elsewhere. It's a really cool show, really fun, um, I can't remember what it came on, let's see, oh, AMC. It aired on AMC March 1st, 2020. So it was like right before the pandemic happened. And, um, well, the pandemic for the most of the world anyway. It's already happening in China. <sighs> Dispatches from Elsewhere was trying to t teach the law of one, basically, <laughs> through a story. And I, we, me and Frosty watched all of it and we really enjoyed it until it got to the very end. And the last episode was kind of like, I don't know kind of poo-pooed on the whole thing but um that's exactly what that's exactly what the show is trying to teach so clearly Jason Siegel must have had some sort of revelation about something or I don't know what happened to him but um that's what he was trying to teach through this show and I got it and I'm sure a lot of other people got it but I'm sure a lot of people did not get it at all anyway back to the book so we're all, we're all one. We're all the same thing. I've been feeling that and understanding that for a while now. Okay. Here's a contradictory thing that I have found. So, so it's raw saying here that it doesn't, it's not able to distinguish each individual person here in our earth. However, However, they, it did reference, <clears throat> remember, it did reference that it was trying to communicate with Don and somebody named Leonard instead of talking through Carla. And it refers to Carla later on in the session. But here it's saying that it can't uh, distinguish. It's not visible to them. So I don't know. Okay, this part... I thought was hilarious. So, <laughs> we are not available to many of your peoples for this is not an easily understood way of communication or type of philosophy. However, our very being is hopefully a poignant example of both the necessity and the near hopelessness of attempting to teach. <laughs> Oh man, near hopelessness. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Ra? That us humans are completely freaking hopeless? Um, you might not be wrong. <laughs> we got a we got to laugh at it, right? It's, it's hilarious. All right, next. 
All right, the few whom you will illuminate by sharing your light are far more than enough reason for the greatest possible effort. To serve one is to serve all. So basically they're saying, man, you guys are pretty hopeless. Um, you guys are never gonna learn this. You'll be lucky if you ever make it to the fourth density. But if we can teach a few of you something, eh, it's worth it. <laughs> oh man, love it. Okay, uh, the only activity worth doing is to learn and teach or teach and learn. Well, I guess I'm doing okay then. Um, because that's pretty much all I do. But I thought that was that was interesting for them to say that. Okay. So here was something that stuck out for me personally. We have a good contact with this instrument, who they're talking about Carla when they say instrument, because of her recent experiences with trance. Because of her recent experiences with trance. Because of my recent experiences with trance. This this raw contact for me didn't happen until after I started experiencing trance. So I thought that was some validation for me that, yes, this is probably one and the same. Okay. Next. Um, so this is the end of the session. And uh, it was just a little bit of... I thought some helpful advice for people who may be either doing trance themselves or assisting with people doing trance. So basically at this point, he's raw is saying it's time for us to stop this transmission because Carla is, she's depleting her energy, right? Um, Jim must have not have done his job correctly the night before. Oh, okay. Never mind. Just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It was a joke. It was a joke. Okay. <laughs> so he raw gives some advice for waking her up out of her trance because remember she's completely full trance she has left her spirit has left her body and let raw enter completely she has no idea what's happening to her she has no idea what she's saying she will only know if she listens to the recordings later or somebody tells her about it so raw tells them to lay their hands at the at the neck region for a brief period of time after they get her attention by calling her name. So they're saying, repeat her name until she responds. Don't touch her until she responds. And then lay your hands on her neck so that they, she, basically she can recharge her energy from the other person. And then I thought this was really cool. So uh, the water part, charge water, charging water is done by placing your hands over the glass and visualizing the power of love entering the water and this will charge that very effective medium into those vibrations and earlier he explains or raw explains that they need to give her a gift of water in which the love of all present has been given so he's saying raw saying i keep saying he it's not a he uh raw says that you can charge water by thinking about love entering it. So there's that thought changing something, thought affecting something. And the last thing that I marked in this session was <laughs> that Ra was trying to tell them, um, was trying to clarify that it was talking about Carla, but instead of saying Carla, it said Carla backwards all rack so that was weird so anyway that's the end of session one um so it was some interesting things some things i still don't understand whatsoever and uh some things that i know i know but i don't understand <laughs> I, I know that time doesn't exist and that all times happen at the same time. I know that, but I don't understand how it works. Um, I understand this whole concept that there is nothing material, that it's all thought, but I really, I can't, I can't even. And the distortions thing about um, us living in this distorted 
reality that because we think we're individuals and and good and bad and all this stuff like that that part is probably the most confusing to me so far so let me know what you think what did you find interesting in this session uh what what did you what do you think about those concepts about the time and the material uh the thought the thought the thought that was a big huge thing in this session so please add to the discussion put your thoughts feelings into it let us know what you think and uh, let's keep talking about this raw contact volume one all right see you guys later bye, -bye.